guys, let's get right into it. So I didn't review the first part and the second part of the reunion because guys, it wasn't good. I just felt like nobody was watching it. It was a waste of y'all time. It was a waste of my time. So there wasn't much to talk about. The only thing that really happened happened in the third part. So I wanted to talk about that. So let's talk about it. My best dress for this reunion was Candace. I think she looked flawless. I felt like everybody else was dressed like Christmas angels. <laughs> I don't know where these ladies were going, but they were not going to the same event as Candace. I love that she had very simple makeup and a nice little slick back ponytail because her dress was giving so much drama. But she looked great. She looked great in that outfit. Who would be my second best dress? Everybody was gagging over Monique's outfit and I was just like, I don't see it. Because first of all, you can see the fingerprints on a little metal of uh, uh, the gold brand or whatever this was on her dress. I mean, Monique is a beautiful woman. So I think that because she's just beautiful, everybody, everybody was just like, oh my goodness, yes, queen. But I didn't see it. Robin looks 60. Like she always ages herself. She never dresses her age. Giselle, I just kept on looking at them earrings about to rip her earlobe. Like it just, because those earrings were hanging. And I was just like, if one earring gets caught in that dress, it's going to be a bloody mess up there on that stage. Karen looked cute. Ashley looked cute at this reunion was filmed in the 1920s. Like this hair, this dress, I will say beautiful makeup. She looks great with a little weight on her. She looks really, really cute. And the face, the outfit and the hair, it just, it was disjointed for me. My best dress of the night was Candace. So let's talk about the only thing that really happened this season and at this reunion that everybody was talking about. Michael grabbing all the men's butts on this entire freaking cast. Like, Michael has a problem. He really, really does. What I did not like was how Andy handled this situation. First of all, why did Andy even show up? Robin was the only one who was like really conducting this reunion like she was asking the questions that needed to be asked she was giving insight she was really the host of this reunion to me Andy was laid back in his chair he was even throwing questions to people and he was just like I think he even said to Giselle can you just ask her like he just didn't feel like it Andy did not feel like showing up to this reunion and it shows maybe it could be the fact that you know he's a new father and he's just exhausted you know what I mean? Maybe that's what's going on and he just does not have the energy that he used to. Because he does all the reunions for these shows and he also does watch what happens live. I think he does it, what, six or seven days out of the week. And then he has a newborn at home. So he has a lot going on and I think he's just exhausted. I will give him that. But baby, you should have got your behind up and moved to where Robin was sitting and let her conduct this entire reunion because that's what she was doing since part one. Another thing I didn't like about this reunion was how they were just making it seem like Michael was like this overseer of the cash, you know, that everybody was just so afraid of him because at the end of part two, he's like looking over um, the scaffolding or whatever of this theater, wherever they're filming. And Andy is like, oh, Michael's right there. And the ladies are like, oh, like, why is everybody afraid of Michael? And then when he came and sat down, the whole thing, the whole reunion, the, or, or at least the remainder of the reunion was about everybody being afraid of Michael, everybody being afraid to talk about Michael. Michael was coming at everybody. Andy never really intervened. And I was just like, how has this become his show? Like he's a day player on this show. He shouldn't be able to talk to the wives like that. They should be able to get a word in. He was really just conducting how this whole thing went, how the story was told. Even if there were people who opposed his side of this uh, butt grabbing story, he would like shout people down, throw out accusations, calling Robin a drunk and like just really Daring the story in a direction that he wanted it to go and nobody was able to come at him or nobody was able to have a rebuttal because even Chris when said, Michael is sitting down talking about how oh I just brushed up against a guy it wasn't that big of a deal one of the many guys that they talked about this reunion he was just like oh, I just brushed up against him it was I didn't grab him or anything like that and Michael is just like normally when you brush up against somebody you say excuse me you were over here saying I'm sorry and I won't do it again that's what you were saying. And Michael was just like, what do you know? He was like, I know because HR called me. I got the call and they wanted to know what I knew, but I told them that I didn't see anything. And then Michael is coming after him and then he's shutting him down. And I'm like, this is unfair because can we be real guys? These are really big accusations. You know what I mean? For a camera guy to have worked in this industry for close to 20 years, to not only risk his check, risk his reputation in this production community, and also put himself out there as a man 
when that is frowned upon when men are uh, victims of sexual assault they are treated worse than women so a lot of men don't even come out and talk about that for him to risk all of that put everything out on the line and go to hr about a castmate on a very popular show there had to be some truth at least from his perspective for him to be like this dude keep on touching me and y'all have to do something about it it got so far as he did not feel like they were taking the necessary precautions to either remove michael from the show or to deal with the assault that took place that he went outside of the show which is what you never do. But if you're not getting the help that you need from HR, then you go outside of the show and he filed a complaint against this dude saying that he sexually assaulted him. That is huge. Nobody just does that. For whatever reason, it went away. Homeboy dismissed it. And Michael is lying and saying, oh, the information was unfounded. I'm like, anybody can read the report. Like it's open documents. It says that he withdrew the claim. So it wasn't unfounded. The cameraman went to the courts and withdrew, or, or at least through his lawyer, withdrew the claim. So that made me think or led me to believe no facts just led me to believe that he was probably paid off. Although the cast doesn't believe it, that's what I think because I'm not there on that. I'm not there at the reunion, but I felt like the cast was being bullied by Michael. I really, really did. If anybody had anything to say to oppose him grabbing men's behind, he would shut them down. He would shut them down. He would scream at them. He would throw out accusations. And it felt in a way that Andy supported that. And that really bothers me, right? Because Andy, this is your show, right? And you are, and you are part owner on this network. You have a cast me who is essentially dangerous to production multiple men have come forward to say that michael has touched him inappropriately right and then we have what two instances on camera we even have michael saying i probably said some things that i shouldn't said or I probably did some things that i shouldn't i did on camera like he knows his behavior i feel like everybody knows about michael's behavior they know about it on production they know about it within this cast andy knows about it bravo knows about it the thing about it is he's becoming so maybe something is happening in his life that is making him or his actions start to spill out while the show is filming. Seems like he's been doing this for years and he's been able to keep it under wrap. But for some reason, it's starting to come up a little bit more. He's starting to, you know, show this behavior on camera, say certain things on camera. And I don't know what's triggering in his life to make him become so reckless with his vices, but there obviously is an issue. And also word on the street within these production streets, it's been an issue with him for a minute, okay? Word on the street, allegedly. So there's obviously something going on with this guy. I just did not like how I felt like he was being protected. Not saying that he should be torn down if these things are unfounded. But if somebody has an opposing understanding of the events that took place, those opposing ideas were not supported. It just seemed like they would, it just seemed like this show really rallied around Michael. And I think it's because Michael probably threatened to sue the show, especially when I they- I think a couple, I think like in my Real Housewives of Atlanta review, I talked to you guys about what a Franken bite is. If you don't know what a Franken bite is, here's what it is. Editors who filmed the show can take voiceover from any scene that was filmed during this season, a past season, whatever. The whole time that they were filming this show, they can take audio and place it over another scene, even though that's not what happened and that's not what was said on that day and that moment by that character on the show. That's what they do, they do it all the time. I think Michael had a Frankenbite from two separate scenes that happened in the same day, but at separate times and with different people. So they took the audio that Michael had with Monique's cousin and placed it over his interaction with the cameraman who eventually reported him. So Andy went on Watch What Happens Live and apologized to him. He also apologized to him at the reunion. What, what made me believe that Michael probably either sued the show or threatened to sue the show was the fact that Andy apologized. All of these Bravo shows use Frankenbites. They do it for every freaking show on this network. Andy has never apologized. He apologized to Michael twice. So that led me to believe that there was probably some legal action that was taking place or was threatened on the show. Because Michael probably had a leg to stand on. Andy decided, let me apologize and get this right. I think that's what happened. And I think because of that, 
Andy was walking very lightly with Michael. But, but I'm like, dude, the proof is in a pudding. People have been saying it about him. We have instances where he has done this on camera. The cast is now talking about He it. was charged with sexual assault. The charge was dropped because Homeboy did not want to pursue the case anymore. You got a liability on your hands. So if Ashley and Michael don't come back next season, that's probably because this show, this network has realized that he's a liability. If they do come back, that just means that Michael probably got the upper hand concerning the law with this show, especially with the whole Frankenbite situation. But I feel like they shouldn't. I don't think that Ashley and Michael should come back. I think let's bring Ashley back when she, you know, divorces this dude because everybody knows that's, that's where she's going, right? Even the cast members on this show, they were protecting her. They were talking about her a certain way because these girls know what the game is, right? These women that marry rich men who are, can we be real? Tender odd and elderly. Everybody know what the game is. Everybody know that you married this dude for his coin, especially the women who are in your circle who have done the same thing. They protect you to a certain extent, right? Candace ain't married for all that. Her and her white king, they the real deal. She just love him and he just love her. There ain't nothing else in it, right? So she's not as protective of Ashley as the other ladies are, but the other ladies in this sisterhood, they know what it is. So they're protecting her in a certain way and they're speaking about the situation in a certain way while Ashley continues to defend Michael because that's what she has to do. She has to secure that bag at all costs. So they can say whatever they want. She's going to deny it. She's going to say it's not true. And then when she comes back a couple seasons later, she's going to do all this crying at the reunion yeah. off the season and just be like, well, I couldn't talk. I couldn't say these things. I saw my husband, but I didn't know what to do. She's going to get paid a lot. She's going to have a great season. Ashley knows what's going on with her husband. They continue to show that footage of her dancing and watching Michael grab that man's behind. Listen, there's nothing wrong with his sexuality, right? Whatever Michael does is whatever Michael does. But it's very apparent that this couple has, you know, an understanding. I don't think that Ashley is shocked at all by Michael's behavior. She's seen it. She's probably participated in it. She knows what's going down with her man. The problem is when he's touching people that don't want to be touched like that. What Michael is doing when he does touch those men is that he's trying to get a sense of where they are. You know what I mean? Putting out a little signal that, you know, this is, you know, are you game? Because I'm letting you know that you're the one that I want. Like, remember when he was talking to that black guy at whose, was it Monique? I think it was Ashley's uncle's party. And he just kept on complimenting that guy, talking about like how big and rock hard he is. And he couldn't, he was so mesmerized by his body. That was, he was trying to talk to him and let him know, are you down? Like giving him signals. Ashley is aware. I think she's just protecting her husband. But the problem is, I think that Bravo has a liability on their hands with Michael. I really do think that he's a problem. And I did not like how it seemed like the show was protecting him. When he clearly has an issue, guys, he really, really does. And I felt like the women didn't feel empowered enough to talk about the problems that they have with him being Mr. Grabby Pants on set. Like, it's uncomfortable. And they weren't able to really express that because Michael shouted them down and Andy allowed it. And I just didn't like it. This this reunion, this reunion, part of the reunion, I felt very uncomfortable. I felt very uncomfortable with the presence of Michael. I felt very uncomfortable with how the conversation was going, how it was being handled. And I just did not feel like this format was the place to have it because it just did not seem like they were allowing the facts to, to speak for themselves because even when Chris was talking he was the only one who was telling the T because when Michael tried to shout him down he was like oh this was about another guy that you grabbed and Michael was like oh 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 really then he tried to blame it on Australia let me tell you something Australia do y'all do this is this how y'all greet each other are y'all just grabbing people's genitalia over there in Australia I don't believe it. I think Michael just threw that out because he was caught and he didn't know how to like deal with it. But I just felt bad that Chris and Candace were the only ones who were like speaking on it. And everybody else was like, well, I'm, I'm going to stay out of it. I'm not going to say anything. I'm like, but you guys know that he has done this. You guys have seen him grab other men. You guys have had people in production come and tell you that this has happened. And I'm just like, guys, and this is the season of Me Too. This is not 
I, I don't see this going well for Bravo. I really, really don't. If he continues to do this behavior, I think he will because this show protects him. This cast protects him. I think he will continue to do what he does. I don't think that he left the reunion feeling like what he did was wrong because he was not only was he empowered, he was protected. Because even after the reunion, he went over to Giselle and was like talking to her. And I felt like he was threatening. Like, I felt like he had like a threatening manner. He was standing over here like, you know what you did was wrong. And she's just like, my, like she's stuttering. And I'm like... How rich is this dude? How much pull does he have in Potomac for you all to be so afraid of him? Like, they were all acting so afraid. Like, even when it got to Juan, because we all know that Juan Sausage is the one that he wants to suck. Juan was like, I don't want to talk about this. Like, he shut it down. Chris's, uh, Chris, Monique's husband didn't want to talk about it. Like, it was just... Everybody just seemed to act really afraid to even speak on it. And I think concerning Robin and Juan... Here is why I think that they did not want to speak on Michael. I think that Michael lent Robin and Juan some money because it's just the way that Juan acts towards Michael. It's not that he's really good friends with him. It's that he's really, he he's endearing to him in a sort of way where it's just like, this is somebody who really helped him out in a really difficult time. That's what I get because he is protective over him in a way. To me, I'm like, there has to be something more because I don't get that they hang out, but I do get that he's grateful to him for some reason. I think it's because Michael probably helped out him and Robin in a really, um, when they were really in a tough time. Also why I think this is because the way that Michael was talking to Robin and Juan said nothing, nothing. And they're in a good place, you would think. And even if you're not, I just don't see no brother sitting over here letting some some old golem looking dude disrespect his wife or his woman or his baby's mama and not like defend her. But he wouldn't. He wouldn't. And I think it's because he either helped him out or Michael is just really successful in Potomac. He has a lot of connections and nobody in this cast, especially the men, they don't want to mess up with him. This was a uncomfortable reunion. It really, really was. The only funny thing that happened <laughs> was when Andy asked anybody if they, you know, want to see Juan and Robin, you know, remarry and everybody said yes, but Michael. <laughs> Michael said, that's my black king, not yours, Robin. <laughs> the reunion ends with Monique and Candace making up. And I'm just like, listen, if you guys are going to make up, please let this be it. Because what I don't need is another Giselle and Karen on this um, on this show. Like, we have enough. Like, Giselle and Karen fight and make up all the time. It's just going to be too much to have four cast members fighting and making up all the damn time. It's too much to keep up. It's very tiring. We're only going to accept this from Karen and Giselle because they started this thing. You and uh, Candace and Monique, nah. Be sisters and let it be done. Don't be in this situation ever again. Also ended with thorns and roses. And again, everybody's thorn was the fact that they talked about the Michael situation. I'm just like, if you have a cast member on this show who is touching people inappropriately, you have to talk about it. But everybody again is like, you know, even Robin is saying that she's sorry for talking about it. And I'm like, it happened. This is the thing that bothers me about this show that's starting to happen and it happened with the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. That's why that show did not do too well. When real things happen in these cast members' lives, they don't talk about it, especially the stuff that's like, you know, that really touchy, juicy stuff. In Beverly Hills, Dorit and her husband, PK, were being sued for like millions of dollars for embezzling people's monies. Nobody talked about it. Like it was never talked about, but Dorit was being confronted by the woman who said that she stole her money when they were on one of their vacations. The cameras were there they never filmed it they're protecting these cast members and i get it i totally understand protecting your cast however if this show is documenting things that happen in their lives give us the real stuff as well as the fluff that y'all write for these characters to have we also want to see the real deal and what happened with michael was the real and deal. i feel like legal matters happen and by the time we got to the reunion nobody wanted to talk about it nobody wanted to touch it and it just was a very uncomfortable reunion because I just saw a lot of people being shut down, having some really reasonable questions and issues about the situation from everything that has been presented. Like, I don't, I don't think anybody should have been apologizing to Michael at the reunion. You touch these men, whatever your story is and whatever their story is. The, only, the one thing that remains is that you touch these guys inappropriately.
So you saying it was just a bump, but why the hell is this cameraman saying, don't touch me like that, man? I mean it. Don't touch me. Even when Michael tried to throw it onto Monique's cousin and say, oh, he likes when I grab his butt. Monique was like, no, he didn't say that to me. I'm glad that she at least said that, although I think she was lying about them cameras in her home. She didn't want to be involved in the mess. But I'm glad that she stood up for her cousin because I think that Michael was trying to make her cousin the scapegoat because he's gay and he wanted to say, oh, he's, you know, he likes when I touch his butt because, you know, he's gay. That's what they do. I felt like he was trying to throw that on him. And I'm glad that Monique defended her cousin and said, he don't um, go around saying, touch my butt and that's how y'all play. No, he didn't. He, he doesn't do that. And that was probably another person that Michael touched because it was said in the show that that, oh, I didn't touch your butt, come get a drink with me. That was between Monique's cousin and Michael. So I'm like, at this rainbow party, he went around after doing all this crying about his baby, he went around grabbing all these men, all these men's behind and they have like something ain't right. Something ain't right. And this show is not talking about it. And I don't like that because that's not fair. That's not fair to the cast. That's not fair for, to the viewing audience. It also looks very bad on the show if you are protecting a predator. Anyway, <laughs> let's end on that note. That's it for me. What did you guys think about this reunion? Let's talk about it in the comment section below. And if you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you um, probably next week for uh, Married to Medicine. I'm starting to watch that, so I'll probably start reviewing that. If I don't get around to Married to Medicine, I will be here for the Real Housewives of New Jersey and the Real Housewives of Atlanta. See you guys soon. Love you. Bye.